Hi, I'm Glenn Darcy, Vice President of Product Management for Arturia. Today, I'm going to tell you about our new product, the Beat Step. Okay, so this is our new Beat Step. It's a general purpose MIDI, USB, pad, and knob controller. Okay, the Beat Step is made with a steel bottom panel. You can see it's nice and thin. Not the width of a finger. You've got 16 pads. Pads are velocity and pressure sensitive. They're all backlit. You can see very brightly backlit. The encoders, you've got 16 encoders. Any of the pads, any of the encoders can be set to their own MIDI channels. They can have different modes. You can have absolute relative modes in the knobs. You can have range limits on the knobs. The pads can be uh, MIDI notes, they can be MIDI CC messages, they can be in a latched or in a gate mode, they can send program change, they can do a whole lot of different uh, types of messages here. You've also got some transport buttons. These can send MMC or they can send uh, any kind of uh, MIDI CC message. Uh, some DAWs don't receive uh, MIDI machine control uh, like Ableton, so you need to use the uh, MIDI CC functions for that. You've got 16 presets, and you can uh, recall them and store them right off the fly here, just off of the recall and store buttons. And then you can change MIDI channels by just touching channel and then pressing 1 through 16 on the pads. This is uh, set as level, set to MIDI uh, CC7 right now. So it's a really a 17 knob box. On the side panel, you've got USB, you've got a MIDI out, and then you've got a CV and a gate out. Now you notice the MIDI out is a mini jack. Well, we ship it with a mini jack to DIN adapter. So you can use this with a regular uh, computer via USB. You can also use it via MIDI uh, to any kind of a MIDI module. Maybe you have an old drum module lying around that you want to be able to play. Maybe you've got a keyboard module and you want to do some strange things with it. Um, you also have CV and gate outs, so you can be triggering uh, modular synths to use it in standalone mode without connecting to a computer, you can hook up the USB power just to a standard USB charger and that will give it power to be able to use it uh, with MIDI or CV without having it connected to a computer. So you can see the pads are extremely sensitive. You don't have to stand or jump up and down on them to try to get uh, sound out of them. I know some pad controllers you have to do that. but these you don't. All right, now one thing that makes this different is that this little button over here that says control underscore sequence, yes, it has a step sequencer. We wanted to make just a pad controller, thought that was a nice uh, product. There's other ones out there on the market and we wanted to do it better by having more knobs and more pads. But then we uh, looked at it and said, hey, this is a really nice uh, analog sequencer kind of layout. So we put sequencer mode. Now what you can do is you can uh, use this and the sequencer has its own MIDI channel and you can drive other uh, software or hardware devices. So right now I'm uh, driving SEMV. And it works like any other step sequencer where you enable and disable your steps here and you change your pitches up here. Now one thing that you have is you've got a number of different modes here that you can play with. So by holding down the shift button, I can change the direction. Right now it's going forward, I can go to reverse. Or I can alternate it. Or I can hit random. Now the fun thing with random is when you start changing up the rhythms. This is your standard forward rhythm. Now I go into random mode. And you hear that the pattern changes constantly. 
thus random. One other thing that you can do here is you can set the uh, time division. So we go to eighth notes, we go back to forward just so it's easier to see. Go to quarter notes, eighth, sixteenths, and thirty seconds. Now one thing is turning the knobs. We get you different patterns. And some of those are interesting, some of them are not interesting. So it feels kind of random right now because one thing that we have is we have different scales. And I've got them set to chromatic. So every time I change and you'll feel a click. These are all clickable encoders. When I hit stop, now I can turn them. I can sit here and set all my pitches as I'm turning the encoders. Now that's all nice. But doing it chromatically, you can hear that's a lot of notes to choose from. And sometimes when you're just playing, you just want it to be kind of generic -y and random. I'm going to recall the uh, original default on here. And so it's just one note right now. Now, as I said before, they were set to chromatic. But one thing I can do is by holding shift and any of these, I can set it to specific scales. Now that allows me to, you know, pick a scale. And when I turn the knobs, so now I'm going to play something and every one of these is going to be within my scale, kind of even if I randomly change them. Now, because the scales are on the input, I can go back and I go, yeah, you know what, this one note right here, I want to change it, and you can change it chromatically again. You know, or I can go to major scale, or minor. Or a Dorian scale. So you have a, a number of scale options. One thing that you also have over here is a user scale. So you can set your own intervals that you want so that you can, you know, kind of fine tune how you want to be able to turn the knobs and have something happen. A lot of times with the, in a live performance kind of thing, or you can turn this into a nice live performance sequencer, whereas you know that the notes that you turn are going to end up being correct within your key. And you're not going to have to worry about, oh yeah, I just, you know, uh, called up, you know, F triple flat here and it, you know, just uh, F flatted my, uh, my beat. Um, so yeah, that, that's a, a nice little feature of the user scales. So one thing is, now we're playing back, we're on internal sync. So this knob is now your rate control. Now one other thing that this can do is if you're using it with shift, and here I'm going to recall my default preset again, which is one note, just for example. If you hold shift and turn it, it transposes the sequence. So you can go an octave up, octave down, which makes it nice when you go into something, you start tweaking. And I say, oh, I love that sequence. That's the best thing ever. But I want it in a different key. So now I've got it in a different key. It's that easy.